We live our lives in high definition. We carry the collective knowledge of the world in our pockets. Technology has connected us to one another in new ways. We're communicating more, but what are we really saying? And are we really listening? Our kids will never know a world without an internet, a world in which the ability to memorize facts is outdated, but the ability to navigate a sea of information overload is vital. In the arts, technology has brought about significant changes in how we create, consume, and promote art and culture. As consumers, we expect choices. We want content on our own terms, where we want it, when we want it. If I love opera, I want to enjoy my opera in an opera house, or in a movie theater, on my tablet, or my phone. And if I really love it, I'm going to tell you about it in a text, or a tweet, or on Facebook. Digital media can turn a casual observer into an active participant, a follower, a friend, a fan, a co-creator, and ultimately, a supporter. The lesson is clear. If we serve today's audiences as we did yesterday's, we are robbing them and ourselves of tomorrow. In Philadelphia and around the world, arts and culture organizations are engaging and broadening their audiences through digital media, creating not just a city of brotherly love, but a global community of connected art lovers. Just as a concert hall is built for a great orchestra, the Curtis Institute of Music has designed an online space to watch performances by rising classical music stars anytime, anywhere. It's called Curtis Performs, and it engages a new generation of arts lovers and supporters by bringing HD concert highlights and full-length works performed by the world's top young musicians to smartphones, tablets, laptops, and desktops. Free HD video of chamber music, orchestra concerts, vocal works, and more performed by students, as well as celebrated faculty and alumni, are all available exclusively on Curtis Performs. <laughs> 21st century musicians must expect their music to be consumed online. Curtis students are learning to perform in front of the camera as well as on stage, giving thought to how they present themselves to an audience that is increasingly visually minded. Curtis performs joins other digital efforts like WHYY's On Stage at Curtis, airing weekly on broadcast and digital cable channels, and WWFM's Curtis Calls, broadcast weekly on digital radio. Through digital media, the Curtis Institute of Music is extending its reach from Rittenhouse Square to the world. In 2012, Philadelphia welcomed the Barnes Foundation to the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. The state-of-the-art facility houses one of the most renowned collections of French Impressionist, Post-Impressionist, and early modern art, including 181 Renoirs, 69 Cezannes, and 59 Matisses. Hailed as eye-opening and intoxicating by the New York Times, the new building has made the collection and the distinctive vision of Dr. Albert Barnes accessible to hundreds of thousands of visitors in its first year. Dr. Barnes never got to surf the internet or hear the term digital media, but he understood the benefit and power of artistic expression, and was driven during his lifetime to share that gift democratically to all of society. Now, virtual visitors can encounter more than 2,000 images of the artwork in a digital library. Audio tours in four languages can be downloaded on mobile phones and iPads 
giving insights into how Dr. Barnes arranged and rearranged his collections in distinctive wall ensembles and featuring interviews with curators and scholars. Digital media encourages visitors to consider the ways in which the objects in the ensembles relate to one another, Dr. Barnes's collection of African and industrial arts, and the interaction of music and visual art. The collection also made a guest appearance in a most unexpected place this year, on the stage of the Academy of Music for Opera Philadelphia's season opening production of Puccini's La Boheme. How did Renoir end up in an opera? It was just the latest digital media innovation dreamed up in the Opera Philadelphia Digital Media Lab. Impressionist masterpieces from the Barnes and the Philadelphia Museum of Art came to vivid life on stage through animated high-definition projections, while others inspired the opera's costumes and set design. The opera is also using digital media to expand its civic footprint. La Boheme was the second season opening production to be broadcast in HD to a giant audience at Independence National Historical Park. Opera on the Mall takes performances out of the opera house and into the heart of the city. For some, it's their introduction to opera. For others, it's a most welcome surprise after a visit to the Liberty Bell or Independence Hall. Surprise is something Opera Philadelphia does well. In 2010, cast members from La Traviata performed the famed Brindisi in the aisles of Reading Terminal Market, treating hundreds of Philadelphians to a little Verdi with their lunch. The video of that surprise performance was posted on YouTube, and that's where the fun started. Opera, as they say, went viral with nearly four million views. But Opera Philadelphia was just getting started. Six months later, Opera Philadelphia brought more than 650 choristers from 28 participating organizations to perform the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah at Macy's. Accompanied by the Wanamaker organ, the world's largest pipe organ, the singers delighted surprised shoppers in a random act of culture funded by the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation. But would the accompanying video prove as popular as Brindisi? Turns out, it was even better. The video attracted more than 8 million viewers and international media attention. Your organization has had these random acts of culture, and so you decided that you were going to do what? Um, we decided that we were going to put 650 singers together to sing the Hallelujah Chorus um, on a Saturday afternoon um, to share the joy of uh, singing in our great city. In using digital media to help more people discover opera, the company realized that opera can discover you, too, no matter where you are. Digital media has changed everything in the past 10 years, and it shows no sign of slowing down. What will the next 10 years bring? How will the arts be transformed beyond 2020? What comes next, and how can we be at the forefront?